many of us are like that? We, we keep thinking, well, I don't know what my purpose is, and, and whatever our age, I thought I'd be, you know, there by now. I thought I would have really accomplished great things. And the bottom line is you need to go within to find out if you are doing what you're meant to be doing. And I know it was quite a come down for me when I finally did go within and say, what's going on, God? I thought, you know, I, what should I be doing? And the answer came just like that. You're doing it. You know, we don't begin to give ourselves enough credit for what may be the littlest things in life. We think, well, yeah, everybody does that. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. And quite a lot of that is how we were raised. Because if you stop and think about it, if you were blessed enough to have a mom and a dad in your life, you either learned you wanted to be just like them when you grew up, or mm -mm, I don't want to be like them <laughs> when I grow up. Now sometimes our perception does change. The older we get, the smarter they were. But I look around in today's world and there are so many children that do not have the blessing of a mom and a dad in the home. And I mean, I'm all for, for women's rights and equalization, but you know, there are a lot of good men in this world too. And I know from our boys, all three of them being teenagers at the same time, if I had not had Ron, a remarkable dad and granddad, I would have completely lost control of them. That can happen at any age, too. My mother always said, oh, Jeannie would have been spoiled rotten if it wasn't for her dad. And that was pretty much true, because any of you that knew my mother knew that she unconditionally loved everybody. And she had lost her mother at a very young age. So nothing was worth arguing about, in my mother's view. Daddy didn't see things that way. And so he did provide a very good balance. But he taught me things that my mother wouldn't have. He taught me how to throw and hit and catch a baseball. Now, I guess my mom could have done that because she played all kinds of sports. I have newspaper clippings featuring my mother in high school with baseball and basketball. And it always was a little bit of a disappointment to her that I wanted no part <laughs> of sports. But I learned from both of them. I was blessed to have my dad till he was in his early 80s. And when he passed, it was one of those things, you know, when you love somebody, you really don't ever want to let go of them. But men are usually very, very prideful. And when a man reaches the stage where he can no longer do the things, that he wants to do to care for his family. And their physical condition is so poor, we have to let them go, no matter how much we love them, because we can't stand to see them suffer. Well, along came Jim McConnell. We know Jim is the father of our church. 
Jim and Betty McConnell and Betty's parents, Ed and Betty, their names are on the charter of the church. So are other people's names, but they were the four that stayed and helped this church until they went to the world of spirit. Others on the charter, you would recognize the names, but one by one they left most to go to Casadega. It's work keeping a church going. So it's never one person's church. The church is everybody, especially the members, but the visitors too. Because every time you walk into the sanctuary, you're bringing hope, you're bringing your own awareness and understandings, and we can learn from one another, and we do. Right now, we're still having to be very careful, of course, because of this COVID-19. And so, masks are uncomfortable, but we wear them. If Rosie was any closer, I'd be talking through this. We do what we can because we're spiritualists at heart, whether we're a member or not, because our healing prayer says, and I will do my part. So we wear a hot, uncomfortable mask, and we scrub all the time. I hope we keep the scrubbing in place long after we don't have to wear a mask anymore. But you know, when you come to this church, you are following a tradition of spiritualist teachings. Our religion is not as old as some of the bigger conventional religions. But you know the one thing that just fills my heart is people come in, they hear a couple of sermons, they see our healing prayer, they see our declaration of principles, they hear our personal responsibility, and they say, it makes so much sense. And it does. It does. Of course, because we accept those ideals, we cannot blame someone else. And we're not going to get bailed out right before it's our time to go. We're responsible, so we do have the give and take. We make mistakes, <laughs> still. We have to try to learn, but you know there are just a lot of things we can do wrong. <laughs> Hopefully we learn each time, and we don't have that particular lesson again, but there will always be another. That's how we grow. That's how we acknowledge, hopefully, that we could have done things better. And then if we keep that in our mind, we've got that lesson, then it's on to the next. You know, Father's Day doesn't get quite as much attention as Mother's Day but it's still very important. It's very, very important. And we've had wonderful men here in this church who support it in every way they can. As I said, Jim McConnell is considered the father of our church because he was here through thick and thin. He did many, many things anonymously he never wanted to have credit for all the things he did. And he was a beautiful healer. He was, at one time, a Baptist Sunday school teacher. He received a horrific accident that left him in a coma for three weeks, burned from head to toe. 
He said the nurses would cry when they would have to put him in water and debride the skin, the burn skin, because it's excruciating. And he said he never felt that. He said, you know, I, I was up there somewhere looking down at my body and my body being worked on. He definitely had a near-death experience. And when he came back, he just, he just felt differently. And in talking with the Reverend Elizabeth Edgar, who was already a part of a church that this came from, and at one time she was the secretary of our national organization, they met and they started talking. And Betty said, have I got the place for you? And it made so much sense to him. He became the most wonderful spiritualist any of us could try to be. And the reason he was so wonderful was because he knew. He knew God in his heart. He knew our spirit guides. Our loved ones were still with us. And he told everybody he could. I'll never forget the first time I walked into this church when it was in a little plaza in Winter Park. He opened the door. At that time, his burns were still very visible. And he said, welcome. I love you. He gave me a big hug, and I thought, well, that's different. <laughs> but he did. One of his mottos was, I love everybody, you're next. <laughs> so Jim was a wonderful father, grandpa, uh, in our case, my stepfather. And that was a fine line to walk because at that time I was pastor of this church and he was the founder of the church and now all of a sudden he's my stepfather and it, it made for a real interesting dynamics. <laughs> it really did. We did not always agree on things. But he would listen and I would listen and we would both learn. So I grew up hearing about Father's Day. I mean, I, you know, we got Daddy a card and so on. And I was just stunned to find out that Father's Day, the idea of it, started in 1909, but it did not become an actual recognized holiday until 1962. No, I'm sorry, 1966. Oh, I was already out of high school. Quite a bit out of high school. <laughs> President Lyndon Johnson is the president that signed the proclamation declaring it. The third Sunday of June of every year will be Father's Day. So if you were lucky enough to have a great dad, you were indeed very lucky. If you didn't, I'm hoping you had another male figure in your life that help you feel safe, protected, encouraged you, encouraged you to do everything you wanted to accomplish. Because that time was very pivotal. We were in the middle of a war. A lot of my friends' boyfriends had to go to Vietnam. We were just hearing from some of the feminists that were burning garments as well as other things and fighting for the right for women to receive equal pay 
equal recognition. Well, I hope you know how many spiritualist women were the ones who got the right to vote for women. I have to admit, in history class, I didn't care about things. It's only as I got older I started really understanding the importance of someone standing up for their beliefs and doing what we reasonably can to help bring about changes. So we see from the pioneers of this religion to current day the importance of the really good fatherly values. Respect for women, the importance of, of paying attention to young people, giving them hope, giving them encouragement. I would not be an ordained minister today if my spiritualist teacher had not told me what are you waiting for? You can do it. You can do it. And I was finally persuaded that, okay, okay. And I did. With Spirit's help, no question. So we see shifts in humanity. We see men and women who are very insecure about themselves and so they get out and they argue with everybody about everything. We have peaceful protests, which is wonderful. We're so fortunate and blessed to live in a country where we can do that. We can protest. But have you ever noticed the man with the noisiest car, the bigger wheels, the music blaring, is usually someone that's not so sure of themselves. So they're not going to give anyone a chance to know that. They're going to just bombard you. Have you ever noticed, I want to say the real men, who are quiet and centered. They know who they are. They don't need to broadcast it. They're the ones who are quietly doing what they can to lift others up. Not their own families, not just their own families, but to lift people around them up. So when we see a gentleman opening a door for us, ladies. Don't get all huffy. I can do it myself. Thank them. And if there is a man that's got his arms loaded, don't be too proud to open the door for him. It'll shock the socks up, and I promise. What this world needs right now is understanding is compassion, it's kindness. And as spiritualists, we know that. So even in these times when everyone is especially tense and, and many people are seriously depressed, we have to go that extra step and do what we can to reach out to others. Don't forget prayer. Prayer is phenomenal. Think of someone and just send them love. And we know that every person that God touches because of your prayer, that person is going to feel better. They're going to be lifted. And they will have an impact on people around them. So never underestimate the power of love. 
never underestimate the power of prayer. We're all in it together. We may as well make the absolute very best of it.